We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Tonight's topic comes from a suggestion from one of our awesome Patreon patrons, Math Guy Dave, who thought it would be cool if we spent an episode talking about low-cost, no-cost games. Yeah, I thought this was a great suggestion from Dave that I keep meaning to get to. It's in our pile of topics, and it's actually kind of near the top. And I see it, and I think about it, and I see it, and I think about it. And I figure with Prime Day hitting on the 12th and 13th, and Nerds Day hitting on the 15th, and all the copycat sales at other online and physical stores going on all week seem like a good time to suggest some great low-cost and no-cost games. And we're not too far away from the usual annual Gen Con sales as well. Yes. Now note, this is not going to be a conversation on how to get the best deals on board games, or a look at our insider tips for finding board game deals. All I'll say here is if you're looking for the best deals on tabletop games, a little self-promotion here, head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on tabletop gaming deals, follow tabletop underscore deals on Twitter, or join the Good Geek Deals Facebook group. Links to all these tabletop deals, resources in the show notes below. So what we are actually going to do tonight is highlight, suggest, I guess, some of the best no-cost and low-cost games we could find. With me highlighting some great U.S. deals. And me highlighting some deals I found in Canada. They do exist. Note, our source for these games and prices is Amazon, either .com or in my case, .ca. These prices were accurate as of July 6th, 2022. So let's start with some mass market games that we actually like that you can get for under 10 bucks at Amazon.com. Starting with Boggle Classic, which you can currently get for $9.97. This is the classic word building, building game with the, the dice cubes you shake up in the plastic thing and everyone writes down as many words as they can. And if you match words, you cross them off and you get points for what's left. This is actually one of my wife's favorite games of all time. She loves playing it with her mom. Uh, it's something she plays with my kids as well. Now, this particular version comes in a great small travel pack. It makes it great for tossing in the glove box, a purse, or a backpack. And that was Boggle Classic. Next, I have Monopoly Deal coming in at nine sixty six, And honestly, that's high right now. It's often been lower. I don't know how many times we said it, but I'm going to say it again. This is an actually good version of Monopoly, where you're trying to collect three complete property sets. Seriously, this one is even nominated for some board game awards and worth checking out. Don't bypass it because of the Monopoly name. Now, that was Monopoly deal, and it's available even cheaper in Canada at only $5. Nice. Five dollars can eat, but I should just buy that at five dollars can eat. I keep walking by it at Chopper's Drug Mart and it's 13 there. And I'm like, 13 is just a bit above my buy it right off. Next, I have Block is Travel for $9.99. This is a smaller, more portable board than the original game, but capes all the rest of the gameplay elements of Blockus, which is a mass market game that I absolutely adore around here. This is a game where you have a bunch of Tetris shaped color polyominoes. You're trying to place all of your pieces on the grid before your opponent does, with the restriction being that you can only touch your own pieces diagonally, never orthogonally. And that was Blockus Travel. Rory's Story Cubes are next again at $9.99. Now, the best part about these symbol-laden dice are the number of different games you can play with them, many including improv RPG style games where players are trying to spend the dice on their hands or tell stories based on the dice in the table and so on. Honestly, this is a game where you're going to probably want more than one set. The one set's about 10 bucks. The more sets you have, the more variety you're going to get. But honestly, I had just the basic set for years and loved it and only eventually added the Batman set to that recently. And that was Rory's Story Cubes. Next, I have Quicks at 790. I like to call this one the hipster roll and write because it was doing roll and writes before they were cool. Roll and writes have pretty much exploded recently. Uh, this is one of those games that everyone is forced to use the same results on dice. I love those style of games where you like you roll the dice and everyone's forced to deal with what they have in their own way. But in the end, of course, every player's scorecard is going to turn out completely different. Um, this one has seven award nominations and three wins. This is guaranteed to be a great roll and write that just uses standard D6 dice. Easy enough to get grandma to play. And that was Quicks. And this one is also available in Canada within our slightly higher limits on the Canadian prices. Next, I have Farkle 999. Uh, this is the dice game for people who kind of like it but are sick of Yahtzee. 
uh, to me, it's just got that bit more strategy to it. And I also really like the push your luck element. Like in Yahtzee, you get to roll three times. Well, Farco, you can just keep rolling, but you could bust. So you want to sit there and push it as close as you can to make as many sets as you can. If you do like Yahtzee at all, give Farkle a try. If you decide you're sick of Yahtzee, this is a refreshing take on a very similar style game. And that was Farkle. Next, I have uh, my last U.S. mass market game would be Wizard. Uh, currently, I'm finding decks for $8.99. This one is for our trick-taking game fans. This is Spades on Steroids. You get your standard deck of cards, but you add in four wizards, which are the highest in each suit, and four jokers, which are the lowest in each suit. Now, this is a bidding game, just like spades, where you're going to predict how many tricks you're going to take and get points for taking those amount of tricks. What makes this one fun is that you, it kind of like the mind now, though obviously the mind came way later. Your first hand is one card. Whoever takes that first trick, your second hand is two tricks. Your third hand is three tricks with three cards, and so on, all the way up to 13 cards in your hand. If you like trick-taking, seriously, try out Wizard. Like, even if you're like, hardcore game, I don't play traditional card games. Seriously, Wizard is a fantastic take that's just a little different from your traditional card game. And that was Wizard. Now, so as to not leave our Canadian followers out, here are some great mass market games for under 15. Now, note, we upped the price to 15 to account for higher game costs and the exchange rate. Unfortunately, you're not going to find very many games in Canada for under 10. So first up, we got Spot It Anniversary Edition coming in at $13.99. Okay. This is a family weight pattern matching game that has a ton of variations. It's very mass market, but with the ton of themes available for folks who enjoy it, there's can be a lot there. And this one's up there with Rory Story Cubes for having different ways to play. There's play your cards, there's match your cards, even cooperative versions of Spot It. And that is specifically the Spot It Anniversary Edition. Next up, we have Milborn Express. This is coming in at $13.27. This is a Dyson card version of the classic card-based racing game, Milborn. Now, I haven't played this one specifically, but I have always had a mm -hmm. soft spot for anything Milborn. Yeah, I love the original card game. I also haven't tried this one, but I would be totally worth checking out my opinion. And that was Milborn Express. Now, next up, we have the Game of Life, the Marvelous Miss Maisel edition. So at 1413, this is a modern update on the classic Game of Life. And it follows the life of the main character from the aforementioned TV show. It's not going to win any awards, but it could be a fun alternative for those who are big fans of the TV show. Yeah, from my side of thing, I don't even know who Marvelous Miss Maisel is. But I did used to love the Game of Life. That was the Game of Life, the Marvelous Miss Maisel. Mrs. Sorry, Mrs. Maisel edition. So uh, next up, we Skip Bo for $11.66. Mm -hmm. Skip Bo has been around since the 60s, and its staying power is because it is just a classic go-to card game for all ages. My kids have loved this one from very early on, and they still pick it up from time to time. And it's just, it, you know, it just lasts. And that was the classic card game, Skip Bow. Next up, Rummy Cup Travel for $10.99. Now, how often can you get a 1980 Spiel de Jahr <laughs> winner for such a low price? Well, here's your chance. This one is another classic that really belongs in the collection of most families, I'd say. A tile-based game of just making runs of numbers, as, as you do in Rummy. Yeah, it's, it's very much Rummy Mahjong, that style of game. I've heard it pronounced a million different ways. Rummy Coob, Rubby Cub, Rubby Cup. But that was Rummy Cup Travel. So next up, we have Apples to Apples at $12.97. This, of course, is a classic party game and our recommendation for those of you who think they want to buy Cards Against Humanity and are absolutely <laughs> wrong. It was even a 1999 Mensa Select winner. Yeah, this is a, a match up your cards and find the best match, which often when playing with adults, especially if adult beverages are involved, goes blue without it being thrown in your face and being forced upon you. And that was apples to apples. OK, well, now enough with the mass market stuff. How about some hobby games? Again, we're going to start with games for under ten dollars at Amazon.com. No, thanks. Not as in no thanks. I don't want games at less than 10 bucks. No thanks. You can currently get for 9 dollars 
Honestly, everyone should own a copy, no thanks. This is a simple to learn, but engaging gameplay makes this the perfect filler, icebreaker, or end of game night aperitif. On your turn, take the card dealt to you or put it on a chip on it and pass. At the end, score the total of all your cards and the lowest score wins, but there's a trick. Any straights, you only score the lowest card in the run. Honestly, this is a fantastic game. I basically just taught you how to play. Um, you can watch actual plays of this. I, no thanks, just a great game. It is one of the better, simple, easy to learn gateway hobby games. And that was No Thanks. Uh, this one surprised me. You can currently get the crew, the quest for Planet Nine for $9.99. That is a lot of games and gameplay for under 10 bucks. This is a cooperative trick-taking game that follows a campaign where you work through 50 progressively harder missions. Now, gameplay is pretty typical trick-taking, but lots of special goals each game, like take a set number of tricks or win a trick with specific cards, avoid certain cards or get tricks in a certain order, and so on. That was The Crew Quest for Planet Nine. A lot of game for $9.99. Yes. Next, I have Sushi Go at $6.29. This pick and pass card game, probably the simplest drafting game out there, features easy to learn set collection rules with pretty simple scoring. Now I admit, both Sean and I both recommend Sushi Go Party over the base game. You can't beat the under $7 price point of the original. Absolutely, and that is Sushi Go. All right, one I never thought I'd be able to put on this list, the biggest, heaviest, most complicated game on our list tonight, Disney Sidekicks. 788. This is an odd one. I gotta admit, we didn't review this game all that favorably. But if you want a super hard to win, extremely difficult, cooperative game, challenge your experienced game group, this game might be for you. For the rest of you, eight bucks is a really good price for some really cool Disney miniatures. And you might get lucky and actually enjoy the game. And that was Disney Sidekicks. Then I have the Magic the Gathering 2021 Arena Starter Kit, which currently you can get for only $6.99. So this does come with two physical Magic the Gathering decks that are ready to play, as well as the rules for how to play Magic, and you can play lots of games against each other and you're good. But this also comes with deck boxes to hold them, so that's usually an additional cost, and cards with QR codes that will unlock these two specific decks for you to play Magic the Gathering Arena, which is a free-to-play online version of Magic. Sorry, I shouldn't say it's a freemium online version of Magic where you can buy cards. Now, the problem with this one is, and I'm a little hesitant to put it on the list, is this might get you into Magic, and that is not cheap or free or low-cost in any way. And that was the Magic the Gathering 2021 Arena Starter Kit. Next, I have Pooh, eight ninety nine. If you are looking for a beer and pretzel silly themed take that game that'll get some laughs, this is a solid choice. This is literally a game about monkeys throwing poo at each other, where it's kind of an RPG like where the poo does damage and everyone has 20 health and you want to be the last monkey standing. This is one of the few super light, fun, silly games that I actually kept because I don't mind breaking this one out at three in the morning on New Year's or an early morning extra life night. And that was Pooh, one of the very few fecal-themed games that we will ever recommend. Very true. Next, I have one that the chat room already called out tonight, and that is Silver and Gold. This is a flip and write for only $9.50. Now, technically, this should be an honorable mention because I've never played it, but Silver and Gold is a very well-regarded flip and write game that almost every podcaster I listen to loves. This pirate-themed game has a handful of award wins and nominations, and it's one that's actually on my personal wish list. That was Silver and Gold. And next, we're back over the border with some cheap hobby games from Amazon Canada. First up, Saboteur for eleven sixty six. This is a hidden role path builder that I actually enjoy playing, unlike most in the uh, hidden role uh, uh, genre. What's interesting is Saboteur Duel, the two-player version you can get in the U.S. for under 10, but not the base game. Interesting. And Saboteur Duel, I'm like, I don't know. I, I haven't played that one. I have played Saboteur. My friend Jamie loves it. I can see the appeal. You know my thoughts on hidden role games. Mm -hmm. That was the original Saboteur. Next up, we have Don't Llama card game, 1386. Now, this is a 2019 Renier Nitzia card game 
of trying to empty your hand first and not get caught with any negative points or a llama. Mm -hmm. The lowest score wins when the first person gets to 40. This I have heard fantastic things about. I have heard a lot of people do that. I think in the States it's just called llama instead of don't llama, or maybe there's another Nitzia game called llama and I might be confusing them. For some reason, a whole bunch of llama games come. We're sick of Mars now. We're on to llamas. I don't know what's up with that, but that was Don't Llama from Herr Nitzia. And there is a dice version of this one as well uh, that's come okay. out since, since Don't Llama. Um, <laughs> so next up we have Kabam! And that's Kabam with three M's. For okay. thirteen fifteen. this is a 2020 pattern matching dexterity game with a superhero theme. Really lightweight, color matching, who can do it first game, but fun with a theme that we all know works for me. Don loves his super games. That was Kabam! Our next up, Super Cats for $14.99. <laughs> Just slipping nice. in there. We've reviewed this one right here on the channel. It's an advanced rock, paper, scissors with Sentai themed cats. It's such a weird game. You're competing with this rock, paper, scissors thing, and then you, the winner gets to battle the robo dog. Uh, it's such a strange game, but dirt cheap and lots of fun. That was Super Cats. All right. And next, Lost City Rivals for $14.90. <laughs> Honestly, I hate this game, but there are people out there who love it. And the pickings are very slim for low cost games in Canada. It's a multiplayer auction version of Lost Cities that I personally feel loses most, if not all, the fun of the original. But take what you can get. I can't remember. Did we actually review this one? This might have been a game where I just chose not to publish my review because I was yeah, that we've unimpressed talked, with we've it. We've talked about it. We have it. talked we about it. it. Yeah. Honestly, like it, in my opinion, get Lost Cities. <laughs> but if you want to play Lost Cities with four people or you love it, that is Lost Cities Rivals. You can get it cheap enough. So far, our list has been all board games, and we don't want to leave our RPG fans in the dust. So here are some cheap RPGs you can get right now in America. Yes. First up is Fate Accelerated, which actually should be under 15 in Canada as well. Uh, this is a version of Fate that has an MSRP of $5. You can honestly get it for $3.99 because it's on sale right now, which I think is a little silly. Uh, this is a very solid generic system based on Fate Core that I know a lot of people actually prefer to Fate Core. Actually, our friend Tracy, most recent RPG was based on the Fate L Accelerated base system. Now, it features only four action types that you can do, but still uses fudge dice and all the aspects and other things you expect from Fate. Now, I'll admit, you're probably going to want to set a fudge dice for this one as well. Those standard D6s can be substituted, but you can't beat a full modern role-playing game system for five bucks. So in Canada, it will just sneak in at $14.74. Okay, that still seems high. Like, if you can get it at your local game store, I think it was supposed to be $5 Canadian as well. That, right, was, so that, was, fate. that was Fate Accelerated. Yes. Next, I have Basic Fantasy, and I'm really tempted because we're live on video to pick this up and show it to you. The paperback of this role-playing game is only $5.50. This is a super rules light, pretty much OSR fantasy T20 game. Now, not only is the base game cheap, but so are the various splat books. Now, I picked this one up myself as I couldn't turn down a full complete role-playing game system for under five, well, sorry, when I get for, for $5.50. And this is like a thick physical book. It's very well produced. It's well bound. There's artwork. You're not getting like this slapped together zine. This is a full fantasy role playing game. I was shocked by how much you get and even more shocked when I picked up source books for like $2 each and they were just as content filled. You can kind of see it there under Pompeii, just how thick that $5 book is. Uh, in Canada, you can pick that one up for seven twenty five. dollars although the guides are a little pricier at $5 each. So uh, your your overall costs will will be uh, a little on the higher. But that was Basic Fantasy. Finally, I have the Savage Worlds Deluxe Explorers Edition, the Lost Leader uh, for Savage Worlds in the previous edition. This is not the current edition of Savage Worlds, but it's only $9.99. And honestly, it is a fantastic game that many, many groups have enjoyed for years. This is the edition I played and fell in love with. You got 
playing card driven initiative, miniature based combat if you want it. And as they like to advertise, fast, furious fun. Added to that, because Savage Worlds, this was the main edition for many years, there are a ton of free adventures, often called one sheets, and content out there, as this was the dominant edition. In Canada, however, nowhere near under $15. See, I picked up my copy for $12 at the local game store at the day. So I think it's just the fact it's out of print. Absolutely. So uh, there's very little on Amazon Canada, except for Dice or the odd campaign book that's going to come in under $15. But how about free games? I think we know something about those. All right. I'm, I'm going to totally cop out a bit here. I'm going to start by pointing people to some of our previous content starting with the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, episode 90, Free D6, and the article that goes with it, Free D6 Games, where we highlight 25 games that only require you to have some standard six-sided dice. These aren't even print and plays. These are the kind of things where you can just read the rules online. Some do have things you can print. And then I also want to point you to a list we have on the blog, which we'll link below, that features over 300 free print and play games and expansions. Now, so as not to disappoint you all here live and listening right now, here are some of our favorite free board games and RPGs. So for me, the first one I have to call out, just because we just talked about it two weeks ago, was in our Getting Started with Dungeons and Dragons episode, where we talked about the, which starter set you could buy. There we pointed out you can get the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition core rules completely and totally free right now from Wizards of the Coast at dnd.wizards.com. The core rules from going level 1 to 20, including monsters and magic items, are all completely free. Now, for uh, sci-fi, an old-school inspired, you can get Stars Without Number, the free revised edition, which does leave out a couple of aspects of the game, but has more than enough to get a lot of game you play in before you're missing any of it. Also, if you prefer fantasy to sci-fi, Worlds Without Number has got your back with the revised edition of that, also free. That's both of the Without Number games. Next, I've got another free fantasy role-playing game, Dungeon Crawl Classics. The quick start rules and starter adventure used to be five bucks. They're now offering the digital version completely free at the Goodman Games website. I actually really enjoy Dungeon Crawl Classics. To me, it's, it's, it's my preferred flavor of OSR, and this is a great place to start. Now, I will admit, it's not going to get you all the way to level 20 like the D&D rules. Now, for something non-fantasy, you can get the City of Mist starter set for free. This is one I think Sean backed on Kickstarter. Is that the one you, yeah, you were waiting for? So you can actually get the starter set for City of Mist once the um, Kickstarter finished. They released the rules for free. This is a comic book film noir role-playing games. So for super fans, you can also check out on Drive Through RPG Kapow with 170 pages of superhero wow. fun. Now, this is a PDF. It's not great graphics or professional layout, but <laughs> there is plenty of content and guidance to get your original superheroes to the table. Even badly laid out, a seven 170 pages is a lot of content. That is. Now, there are a ton of other free RPG quick starts out there, including stuff released just a couple of weeks ago for free RPG Day. We also encourage people to check out the free section of DriveThruRPG and itch.io. All right, let's move on to some non-role-playing games, and I want to start with a big, cool mini or not game that you can get completely free, and that is Xenoshift Onslaught. This is an alien predator inspired deck building game from Simon that was originally huge Kickstarter at the time before they started doing the huge miniature ones. I actually have friends that own copies of this game. We all blinged out early in the lockdown. Simon decided to offer the entire game for free as a print and play. And honestly, I really dig this deck building game. It had plenty of tension, tension and most importantly, really good mechanics for cooperating that made you feel like a squad. I strongly recommend checking out Xenoshift Onslaught and work together with your friends to fight back the Xeno threat. And that was the Xenoshift Onslaught print and play. Next, I have a game we talk about all the time on this show and bemoan the fact it's out of print and we usually don't mention it, but you can actually get it 100% free. 
That is Yardmaster, a thinky filler train game that we absolutely love. Now, sadly, the publisher of this game, Crash Games, has gone under, and the game's, as far as I know, dead in the water because of that. But one of the awesome things they did was toss up the print-and-play version for free on Board Game Geek. And that was Yardmaster. Now, my last free game suggestion I'm going to throw tonight is the free print-and-play version of Unfair from Good Games Publishing. All of us love this theme park building card game, and the fact you can print your own copy is just awesome. Well, you're still going to need some tokens for tracking cash and a first player token and round trackers and stuff like that. You can still have all of the fun of Unfair without the cost of buying a $60 game. And that was Unfair. So now there are also other ways to play free board games that don't require a printer, but do require some internet access, which I assume you all have because you're listening to us right now. Uh, that is, of course, playing online through sites like Board Game Arena and virtual tabletops like Tabletop Simulator. Now, along with this, there are also dedicated sites for specific games. I'd strongly recommend checking out the Codenames version you can play online, as well as, of course, full digital versions of games that cost way less than their physical counterparts. The Steam version of Terraforming Mars costs you way less than the Stronghold version. While we don't have time to get into all the options here, I do encourage you to check out these digital options. They'll be warned. Just yesterday, I was reading someone who started playing Board Game Arena for free and in less than a day ended up with a two year subscription and had ordered the Japanese import version of Can't Stop because it was so much prettier than the American version. <laughs> there free you go. Doesn't always end up being cheap. Yeah, it's just like the Magic the Gathering caveat. You start with that starter set. I, I don't want responsibility for starting to dig that hole for you. Now, finally, I am going to offer up my all-time best tip for making this hobby as cheap as possible, and that is to get involved with the local or online gaming community. Online, there are Facebook groups, Discord servers, and other great places to get together and play games. Forums and Board Game Geek, you can find people all over the place. And in person, check out your local game stores, gaming cafes, meetups, possibly libraries, and other places gamers gather. Honestly, the cheapest way to take part in this hobby, after all, is to play someone else's game. Well, that's it for our talk about low-cost and no-cost tabletop games. Now remember, we're here to answer your gaming and game night questions every week. Well, most weeks. We're going to miss next week. But we're usually here for you. If you got a question for us, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, or fire off an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. 